Hello everyone, it's April 12, 2012. And as you know, yesterday there was a big earthquake in Sumatra, initially listed as an 8.9, subsequently downgraded to an 8.6. Seismographs around the world have been black for 24 hours. It's starting to stabilize now. This is what the last 24 hours looks like. If we click on any one of these, as you can see, that was the last hour up until 8.57 perhaps in Barbados. As you can see in the last few hours it's been stabilizing. You can see some resemblance of horizontal lines again. Solomon Islands. Okay, so it's starting to stabilize significantly. Of course on March 11, 2011, the Japan quake, these types of graphs were like this for about four days. Okay, we've only had about 24 hours of this, so it is significantly smaller. But this is huge, absolutely huge. Okay, so let's have a quick look back to see what it looked like at the time the quake first hit. I still got it on my computer, haven't closed the browser, and this is the initial movement in the first hour. get a better idea of how big and how long this movement has continued on, let's have a quick look at Missouri for example. And I've put together a crude time lapse. As you can see the earthquake registered at about 8.55 a.m. UTC time. And as you can see in the last couple of hours there have been two significant earthquakes in the Gulf of California. Both located in almost the same spot. 6.9 and a 6.2. And later on yesterday it's been downgraded to a 6.5 initially listed as a 7. This one in Mexico. Because we had the second 8 plus which was 8.2 later than yesterday. We started with the 8.9, now an 8.6, followed by a 6 in the North Indian Ocean, followed by an 8.2. Put in perspective how huge this was. The earthquake was located here, yet these buoys, even on the Pacific side of that plate, these buoys are all in event mode. The one that's in the biggest event mode is actually down here in the South Tasman Sea near New Zealand and it is showing a, a hundred meter spike. There is no tsunami in New Zealand, no tsunami warning given to New Zealand either but that's a big spike. As you can see the measurement on the left says meters. Have a look at some of these others. None of these are as, anything as spectacular. even up here. Okay, it's registered it here. So this is not a tsunami wave, this is the whole plate moving. This whole area here has obviously moved. If we have a look at our earthquakes, tides and alignments chart, we can see we just passed the moon, earth, Pleiades alignment and we actually haven't quite reached the moon, earth, Orion alignment or galactic core, depending which way you're looking. Now if you're standing on the moon, looking back at the Earth, this is where the Earth would be in the sky, just above Orion. Now many major earthquakes would actually occur with the position of the Earth or the moon slightly further around, but this is pretty close to that. 
For example, on December 26, 2004, in almost the same location, we had the magnitude 9.1 with the resulting tsunami that killed over 240,000 people. Well, if we're looking at the Earth towards the Moon, the Moon is in almost the same position in the sky as the Earth is in this situation with the 8.6 and a subsequent 8.2. But we get that sort of alignment twice a month. Why this time? I'm not aware of any long period comets being in our vicinity or any incoming CMEs or X class flares. But we should look at the magnetopause anyway. Okay, so let's look at it for April 11 at 8.38 a.m. We're at 7.33 on that morning. 8.02. Ah, at 8.13 and 33 seconds. What's this band here? That is supposed to be a high energy reading. Boom! It hits us at 8.21 a.m. And that's passed by 8.45 a.m. So what was that time again? 8.38. That's looking like it's a good candidate for it, isn't it? Looks like we got hit by something. But what? And what about this regular earthquake pattern we've been getting since January 10 of this year? Has that sequence been broken? Or is it continuing? I talked about this unusually regular pattern in the last couple of videos I've made. However, in the last few weeks it appeared as if that sequence had finally broken. But now, it doesn't look like that at all. It looks like it's stronger than ever. Okay, so it began on January 10 with the Sumatra earthquake at magnitude 7.3. And if we look at the most recent earthquake, magnitude 8.6 and 8.2, west coast of northern Sumatra, on April 11. Let's go halfway between the two. We've got the magnitude 6.7 in Russia. Now between the Sumatra and the Siberian earthquake, we've got the Vanuatu a 7.1 and between the Siberian and the second Sumatra earthquake we've got Mexico a 7.4 and now we can go halfway between the Vanuatu and the Siberian earthquake we've got the Solomon Islands 6.4 and halfway between the Siberian and Mexican earthquake we've got Vanuatu 6.7. Now halfway between Vanuatu and the Siberian earthquake we've got the Loyalty Islands are 6.6 .6. and halfway between the Mexican earthquake and the Vanuatu earthquake we've got the Japan earthquake of 6.9. Now at the same interval after the Mexican earthquake we've got an earthquake in Chile a magnitude 7.1. Now it looked like the sequence was actually broken because on March 31st we didn't have any significant earthquakes but on April 11 we now have this 8.6 and an 8.2, perhaps it was an 8.9, huge. So now the sequence does seem to be continuing. And of course the other thing I've been looking at are these sea level change minimums taken from a buoy in the northern Pacific. I'm trying to use that to draw a line between the moon and the earth to try and triangulate to a hypothetical object passing through our solar system. And this is what it's looking like at the moment. Okay, so Okay, this simplifies it down a little bit. This is for when the position of the moon is outside of our orbit, and the lighter blue is for when the moon is inside of Earth's orbit. That triangulates to a slightly different point, but they do seem to suggest something passing inwards. And of course, this has got a significant delay in it because we're looking a month back here and a month and a half back here. So if it was triangulating to an object, the object would be very close to us now. So unfortunately I don't have any answers, I just have these observations. Um, hopefully nothing more will happen in the next 22 to 24 days. Technically this most recent earthquake or series of earthquakes was actually 24 hours too early. And luckily there were very few casualties in this year's earthquake and no significant tsunamis made landfall. Okay, thank you for watching.